this sound, I probably don't need to tell you, is this. Uh, maybe I'm crazy, but that sounds like someone saying, whoa. How is it possible that this synthesizer can make such a vocal noise? That sounds like a, a person's voice. Well, and you know, that's the cool thing about synthesizers is that well, they obey the laws of physics. And the laws of physics don't say that a sound uh, has to come from one particular place. There are a number of ways that things can make sounds that sound like sounds that we recognize, but are coming from a source that are unexpected. And that's what's happening here. The human voice is made up of formants. There are frequencies that are focused on and amplified. There are resonances that exist in the human body that we manipulate to make speech. And as it turns out, the synthesizer is designed to be able to accentuate certain frequencies. That's what the resonance setting is for. And when you have a synthesizer that has multiple resonance settings, and especially a synthesizer that can do band pass, band pass is important because those formants in our voice are resonances and they are bands of resonance. So whereas a low pass filter cuts off high frequencies and may boost frequencies at the cutoff point, band pass filtering gives you one big like pyramid of focused frequency. And that's more like what, what formants are. So this synthesizer has the ability, since it has a, a 12 decibel per octave multimode filter that has the band pass possibility, we can focus on those bands and we can accentuate human vocal formants, the frequencies that those are usually found, and then shape the cavity with the filter using the envelope. Because, I mean, these are the things that our mouths are doing anyway. When I say, whoa, like this is, whoa. Um, it's my mouth is f shaping the frequencies that are coming out of the oscillator that is my larynx in the same way that this synthesizer is doing that same thing. So there is a direct correlation between its manipulation of electrons and my manipulation of air molecules. So the reason why this sounds like a voice, it's not a trick, it's actually doing what a voice does. <laughs> and that's something you can do with a lot of synthesizers. I've done it on the ARB 2600, which only has a low-pass filter. I've also done it on a Mini Moog, which also has only a low-pass filter. It's just that it's easier when you have a bandpass filter. So anyway, let's look at what this is made up of. Both oscillators are set to 16 feet. Uh, one oscillator has the triangle. One oscillator has the saw. Um, the, the mixing, it looks like they're both set to about 11 o'clock on uh, in regard to volume. VCO1's filter, the sawtooth wave, has a, you know, about 10 o'clock filter cutoff frequency because they don't label them. You have no way of knowing what exactly the filter cutoff frequency is. You just have to go by ear. There's a slight LFO mod. The LFO is going extremely fast. So this is just going to make sort of a buzzy vibration. Uh, resonance is relatively high and EG depth is relatively low. We're set to bandpass filter. Now on the second filter, where the triangle wave, which doesn't have a whole lot of harmonics in the first place, is going, again, bandpass wave, uh, I guess 11 o'clock uh, filter cutoff frequency, full resonance all the way up, EG depth is about the same as the first. Um, and those are both dealing with the first envelope generator, which has a medium attack, a high decay, no sustain, medium release, and then the EG2, which is governing both of the um, amps, has a quick attack, very slow decay, medium sustain, and some release. And that's the sound that it makes. Now I have a theory here. If we turn this second oscillator up to sawtooth, we can make it more vocal. 
It's sort of a different sort of vocal, but it's the same thing. But yeah, it's when you have this band pass, it, it really helps you focus. A resonating band pass helps you focus on formant frequencies and make human vocal sounds that you shape in the same way. You sh use the filter to do the same thing that our lips are doing. So that's what we're looking at here with the sound I've made on the CS15. I've made a vocal sound that, you know, obviously doesn't sound exactly like a human, but sounds enough like a human that it's not hard to say, hey, that's kind of a voice sounding thing. Anyway, that is one of the benefits of having this architecture and the architecture of synthesizers in general.